Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Now in today's video I'm just going to talk about the different things and the materials you want to have when starting off and how you have to treat them, clean them and you know not destroy them as fast as possible. So now before I start rambling on and on and on let's just get right into it. <laughs> Now choosing the right pencil can be kind of hard and you really want to be careful not just looking at what kind of a strength your pencil is but also about how your pencil looks overall. There's different things you really have to look at, for example the wooden casing and if the lead is placed really nicely in the middle. If the wooden casing falls apart or is very flaky then uh, it's really not a good pencil. You have to look really close at the pencil before you buy it so these things can be avoided. And sometimes the lead isn't really placed right or even it's not glued in really tight. I remember this being a f really big problem with really old pencils back in the day. Lead would just never be glued right in place and so it would slide out whenever you would push on the tip of the pencil. This problem can overall also be avoided by just using mechanical pencils. I like to use Faber-Castell Gripmatic and Polymatic. They come in the sizes 0.7 and 0.5. The nicest thing about these pencils is that you do not have to click on the back to recharge the lead. So it has a mechanism in the tip of it that makes the lead come out by itself, which is really really nice and I wouldn't go back to another pencil. Let's also don't forget that you can sketch in colors. Most people do it in red or blue but you can use any color or pencil you want to. The thing with these is that your pencil might get pretty short at some point and there is a way you can make that longer again. You just use a pencil extender where you just have to put in your little pencil piece in there and then you have a long pencil again. The best way to store your pencils is upwards in a cup but you can also store it in a pencil case or in their original casing. That's however you want. And the most important thing is that you don't throw your pencils around. Right, so a sharpener isn't really that tricky. Basically what you have to look at is how you want it to have. You can have some with a little container on the bottom or without it. It's really up to you and you have to choose whatever you feel most comfortable with. However, there is a few things you have to be really careful when choosing the right sharpener. The easiest and best way to know if your sharpener has good quality is to take your pencil and start sharpening something. If the sharpener makes one piece, then it's a good sharpener and it's very sharp. However, if it makes a flaky and multiple pieces and it just kind of shreds the pencil, obviously that's a really bad sharpener. There aren't really a million different things how you have to care for your sharpener. Most importantly is don't put it in water and leave it there or in water in general because it will get rusty. That obviously you should not sharpen metal things or you know your finger, things like that, because that can just break it. If you really want to use a sharpener for the rest of your life, I would recommend you get some new blades for your sharpener. You can buy these one by one in like an art store or something like that. Then there's sharpeners where you can't really go wrong with, like these kinds of sharpeners or electric sharpeners. They just shred off your pencil so there is not really a good sharpening coming off. It's easy but it makes the lead very long so the tip that comes out I wouldn't recommend it too much for colored pencils because the lead can break off really easily if there's too much exposed. Now the thing is if you didn't know this if your lead actually breaks off there is an easy way to take that out it's just you screw off the back of it and then you can not only only clean it but you can also get the lead out pretty easily. However I have to say that that happens really rarely with these kinds of sharpeners. If you do have a pencil where the lead breaks off all the time it might be because you let it fall down too much or because the wooden casing and the lead isn't placed right in the middle and that can really affect the way you sharpen the pencil if the if if the lead isn't placed in the middle of the casing. Oh yeah, and it's also nice because you can make a little fire with all the shreddings in there. <laughs> Burn it out. 
Alright, alright, okay. So this is a very personal thing for me because a few years ago I saw a girl on YouTube and she was asking for help because her paintbrushes were always breaking. And so she was just showing a few clips of her drawing and how she was cleaning her brushes and caring for them, etc, etc. And the way she cleaned her brushes and cared for them was exactly how you should not do it and she was legitimately asking for help. So this is something that doesn't go out of my head and is very important that you know how to do this because apparently not everyone has common sense like that. Okay, so no matter how you store your brushes, if it's in a cup or in a case like I do, both, but still, there's always ups and downs to both of these things. First of all, if you do want to store it in a cup, then please always with the tip upwards. Come on, that's just common sense. The danger with that is just that it can get very dusty and go into the bristles. So basically what you have to do is you have to clean the brush every time before you use it or you might have some dark marks on your art. When you're putting your brushes in a case like I do with my favorite brushes, there's a big chance that they get smushed and just overall the bristles get bent etc etc. However, most of the brushes I buy have these little plastic tubes to protect the bristles and you know I just keep them and put them back on so it's pretty secure. With these tubes however you have to be a little careful too because sometimes when you put it on you can bend bristles with the tube. So what you want to do is you want to put it on really slowly while twisting and turning your brush and then you can see the bristles should come upwards and bend into the right direction and also putting them in while they're still wet is also a good option. One thing that I really like to do with my brushes is cut off the back of them. Most of the brushes come in a really long stick with them and it's really uncomfortable for me to draw with them so I just like to cut off the back of them and then it's easier for me to hold them basically. But again that's just up to preference. Now it's completely normal if your brush is kind of stained and especially around the top of it then it's normal that your brush is stained there. Most of the time with light bristles you are not able to get these stains off ever anymore. However, they're not dangerous for your art because they're not coming off ever again so they're not gonna ruin your art anyways. For oil paints and things like that you should obviously use special cleaning supplies but I'm only using aquarelle paints and such. However, there is a little danger with, for example, Masking fluid is a very big danger for the brushes. Do never use your masking fluid with your favorite brush because the favorite brush is just gonna die instantly. The masking fluid is especially designed to be waterproof. So whenever it's been touched with water, it doesn't come off as easily. So if you use a brush for your masking fluid, don't try and water it down and clean it with water and all that because that's just gonna ruin the brush even more. The way I do it, I just use an old brush, put it in the masking fluid, use it a few times and then I cut it to an angle like that because that was the easiest thing. And cleaning isn't really an option but the only thing I do is I just dip it in the masking fluid and then I use it and then I just wipe it off with a towel. That's the only thing I can think of. If you know how to clean off masking fluid off brushes then uh, I think everyone would be welcome to hear that. Thank you very much. Okay, so mixing the paints is a very tricky thing to do. Now the main thing I color with are watercolor inks. I like to use the ones from Colorex. A good thing about these is that you can still wet them down and revive them. I have different palettes for different kinds of things. So for my skin tone I have one palette and for my blacks and for all the colors too. Every kind of color shade has its own little compartment so whenever I want to color something and I need to mix some new paint up, I don't have to clean out the whole palette and make my complete new paint. I just, I can just color it on top of the other one and make some new colors. I've even put like hot glue on different pieces because with that it's easier for me to have more compartments than there would be normally. And I also put some on the bottom because it helps with the sliding and the noise reducing. Yeah, like you don't have to do that, but I prefer doing it. The reason why I use different palettes for different things like black and skin tone is just because I don't want to have different colors on these ones. I don't want blue to mix with my black and I don't want green to mix with my skin color, that kind of thing. 
the black paint I use is other than the other inks I use because I don't really use ink for black. The reason for that is just because black ink is mostly not water soluble, so it would just not come off anymore and probably ruin some pieces and I've ruined pieces like that. So I just use some gouache paint and I water it down and then I mix it on my plate. Once I'm done using the paint I just let it dry and the next time I need some light gray or some black I just take some new paint or I just water down some old from the palette. As you can see I have multiple places here. I have the big compartment, the one on the right and the one on the bottom here. There is a reason for that, is that the one in the middle is for a lighter paint, so light gray. The one on the right is for this pearl medium, and the one on the right on the bottom is just for really dark black spots. Now the skin tone one is also very easy. I have a big compartment for the skin tone that I mix myself with different inks. And then I have two other compartments, one for brown that is currently empty, and one for dark blue because some skin tones need some blue shading sometimes. Now one of the most important things and that also helps with avoiding the really dark spots at the tip of your brush is if you just load your brush up with water before you even attempt on putting it into any color and then as you can see all the ink is just going to be only in the tip of the brush and not in the end of the brush so that way you can really avoid that. By the way do that with every color and not just inks. Another really important thing is whenever you are mixing a color, even if it's just putting the ink or the pigment onto your palette, always go the other way than the bristles go, if that makes sense. So towards yourself, like you can see here. That way you don't push the ink inside of the top of your brush and you don't bend any bristles. And now a really quick demonstration on how you should really never do it, ever, ever. Don't, just, don't do it, okay, ever. Ugh, sorry for that music. Guys, this is legitimately what the girl did and she was like, But what am I doing wrong? It's so weird. What the hell? Bro, what? And she even cut off the bristles at the- That was sticking out at the sides. Like, what the hell? Who taught her this? Okay, so let's just talk about cleaning the brushes. As I said before, if you use oil paints or such, you might need some paint thinner or some special cleaning tools to get your brushes clean. However, if you're using watercolors like I am, then water is just totally enough. What I like to do is I took an old soap dispenser and I filled it up with water. There was still a tiny bit of soap left in it. And all I did was fill it up with water and then it's a nice dispenser that I put in my little lid from anything like hairspray or something. And that way I can clean my brush really nice and easy. And then all I do is I just wipe it off with some paper towel after that. Something that is also pretty important is to keep your shape. So your brushes might lose their shape after you have used them a few times. Now to kind of make them keep their shape a little bit better, it's really easy. You just need to hold them into your hands and then just push it with your fingertips a little bit and make it pointy again. There is even some product out there, I'm not sure how it's called right now, but that they put on the brushes when you buy them, the stuff that makes them all stiff, which when you get your brushes, you are supposed to wash that off. So don't forget to do that. Now that way your brush might have the shape a little longer. I find using water and your fingers or the paper towel is completely enough. However, if you do want to try that out, just be prepared that it might be pretty expensive. 
And now let's have a quick talk about inking pens. The inking pen that I use the most is my G Pen Nib. Normally you are supposed to put them in nib holders that are exactly, you know, specially made for this kind of thing. However, I find it really hard to work with these things because I can't really have any control over it. The pen is just really bulky and big and the feather is so far away from my finger. So what I did, I just put it in this old uh, ink pen that I had from Lamy. You know, it works really well, I like it like that. And uh, other than the one that I made previously, I didn't have to cut down any of the, um, uh, the feather or anything. So it's really fine like that. Now, for the inking, obviously I use India ink. However, I like to fill it up into another kind of container. This one, for example, was from some kind of makeup. I'm not sure what it was, but I cleaned it out and I put my ink in it. The only real reason why I'm doing that is because if you put it your ink in the original container in the bottle for example as I had you will never be able to see where the amount of ink is so I have put it sometimes multiple times way too deep in or not deep enough so you have to dip a lot of times or you just put it in way too fast and everything goes all over the wood or whatever you have and it just the metal for example gets rusty inside so not really nice the way I put the ink in another container is pretty easy. I just use a dropper like this one and I fill it up with ink as much as I need and then I would just put it into my other container. However, this is a very, very messy kind of thing and as you can see the ink doesn't really clean out of it and it's super messy, you get it everywhere. I just have to think about ink and I get it all on my fingers. Now the thing with the black is that the dropper is black no matter what and I don't have to cross it with any other colored ink so it's still kind of fine however if I wanted to use another dropper for other colored ink it would cause a lot of problems because obviously the ink doesn't really clean out of it and so it's a little bit harder to make it one color because you don't want to mix other colors into it so I really only use that technique for my black ink. Okay, so here's a thing where I don't really understand. People told me that apparently the ink would flow a little nicer if you would heat up your nib first. However, I can't really say that I have seen any change to it, so I wouldn't say it's necessary to do that or really important or a great change or whatever. You need to try it out yourself. The way I clean the nibs afterwards is pretty easy too. I just take some paper towel and you really want to fold it over so it's like multiple pieces and not just one layer. You can take your water from anywhere you want. It doesn't have to be out of a spray bottle, but um, it's really easy like that and you just clean it off with a wet paper towel. I wouldn't really recommend using it under the top because it can get inside of your pen and then get rusty again and you really don't want any of that. And again, all my things, I keep them in a case. This one was one that I made myself. I also keep my ink in the same case, so I have everything that I need just ready to use. The reason why I'm not talking about anything like um, pens and other things to ink is because you don't really have to maintain a fine liner or clean a fine liner or store it the right way. It's just a fine liner. So these things are really way more important, I think that's why I'm talking about them. The eraser can be a very important part of your artwork or it can be something you never use. Depends on how secure you are with drawing. Personally, I erase a lot and I have used a lot of erasers in my time. However, the one that I find is the best is this one, the Faber-Castell Grip 2001. It's very sturdy, it's long lasting too, and it's also a long eraser. It's a very hard one and uh, you can make it erase it to a point so that you can always have it uh, very pointy and you can erase little details too. I only really use it for sketches and this one I like to use it for all my ink works. It's also a Faber-Castell but it's just more like a soft one, it's the normal Faber-Castell square eraser and it's really nice because it's softer and I can take off the really light sketches off of my ink works. 
Now here's the kind of eraser I want you to see that you should not get. Because this eraser is really really soft and as you can see it already broke. It looks like it would be a good eraser because it's pointy and you could maybe erase some detail with it. However, the eraser is so soft that you cannot get uh, any detail out of it. It will just bend at the tip and make a mess. It's just not easy to work with. It's It makes a lot of flakes and it gets dirty really fast too. So not recommending this one at all. Now for all my things I have this little metal case but if you have like a normal pencil case out of fabric and you want to get your art supplies everywhere you go then maybe it's a good idea to put your eraser in a little container like this. This is just an old um, Kinder Surprise egg thing where you can put the eraser in there because an eraser gets dirty really fast and this closes it off and you know it's not going to go really that dirty. Okay, so now we are finally on to the paper. The most important thing is that you store it somewhere where it can't go wet. It should be stored somewhere where the dust can't reach to it too well and uh, it's also protected from bending, etc, etc, etc. Having a piece of the original packaging where it says the grams and what kind of brand it is is really good because then you know what kind of paper it is. I, for example, I have no idea what these papers are and now I'm kind of screwed. I keep all my watercolor paper in a separate drawer where it's all in their original packaging still so that obviously I know what kind of paper it is and for what I can use it. The only thing I keep somewhere else is my little book like that. I just keep it up there so I can just pop it out if I wanted to draw in it, which actually never happens, but I could still do it, you know what I mean? Oh, okay, so here it is. That's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this and if you did so then please leave me a like. If you have any suggestions that I should make a video about or I forgot to talk about it then please leave it in the comments. Also don't be afraid to ask me any questions um, about anything really and uh, yeah hopefully I'll see you in my next video so don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, bye!